Hello, everybody, and welcome back to HVAC training videos. I am your host, Zach Sciotta, as indicated by the tiny bubble at the bottom of the screen here. I want to welcome everybody from the chat here tonight, our YouTube live chatters. Tony Del Grego and Old Handy Luke have started chatting already. Feel free to chat along with us as we talk. I will try to peer over there as often as I can to see if there's any questions or concerns. If you want to do me a big solid, please put your questions or just things you really want us to see in all capital letters. Uh, one other thing I want to tell you about is I like to tell you every single week, if you go down into the description of this video, you will see a way that you can sign up for text notifications. And what you'll do is you'll see a link. You'll hit that, you'll go to a Google Doc, and you'll fill that out, and I'll be able to send you email to text notifications that we're going live. Thank you for subscribing. If you've subscribed already, put a like on the video if you enjoy it. Now, just don't take my word for it. Wait halfway through the video, and if you like it, you can like it. You don't have to like it now. That's premature. That won't be believable. You have to wait through halfway through the video. I see our buddy Eric Kaiser is in the chat as well. Welcome, Eric. I like that Eric watches these. He's not only a guest, but he's also a person that enjoys watching HVAC live streams. I think that's great. Thank you very much, Eric. We have to get you on another podcast here in the next month or so. Maybe we'll get you in March. We have a lot of shows coming up. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you about those. Andy Holt will be next week, the guy from Outdoor University. We're going to be talking about different kinds of customers. I think there's five different customer types we're going to be talking about. The week after that, we have Steve Rogers. That is not Captain America, as I initially thought. It's Steve Rogers from the Energy Conservatory. He'll be talking about residential air balancing, which I thought is something that we could really use. I could use that personally because my closet is too warm. Now, I can adjust the dampers, but he's going to go into a lot more detail than that. That's just a small sliver of what he's going to talk about. He did a great video for True Tech Tools about different airflow hoods, and we'll mention that as well, I am sure. We could talk about the infamous CPS flow hood once again as we all sigh slowly at its inaccuracy. Next month, February, should be just as exciting as January has been. We have David Richard returning with my buddy Justin Beaver. We're going to talk about, I think we're going to do residential system capacity. Calculations, how to do it properly. That's going to be the first show of February. I think the second week in February, we're going to take the week off. Don't hate me. And then the third week, let's see who we have here. I'm trying to see if we already signed some people up or not. I know we have some people coming. I think Don Gillis from Emerson will be here, but I think that's the fourth week. I'll have to check and see who the third week is. I think it's going to be Jamie Kitchen, if I remember correctly, from Dan Faust. So that's a, a star-studded lineup for February. So a lot of education to be had and hopefully a little bit of fun too. But tonight we have Paul. Paul will be with us just momentarily. Paul, I'm going to pronounce it very German, Schutbert. I think that's that's probably the most German you can make that sound. But Paul Schubert's here from RLS. He's going to be talking about press fittings. Now, press fittings are fun because I've actually used the press fittings that his company makes. And I've never had one leak before. So I'm in the camp that they work just fine. But I know there's people all over the place on this subject because what do we all grow up doing? Brazing. We all grow up brazing. So moving away from brazing is like a big change in life. Now, Paul's going to console us and tell us why... RLS fittings and press fittings in general are not the not the devil. They're not the things we think they are. A lot of times you get certain pictures, and I'm thinking of a certain story where a guy used press fittings on a job and all of them leaked. Well, it turned out he didn't deburr any of the copper, and he ripped the O-rings up on every single fitting. Now, when you're brazing, there is also a procedure. The difference is that a lot of us don't do that procedure, and it manifest later in a different way when we're long gone. So you still have to follow the procedure both ways. So I see down in the chat here. Oh yeah. See, Eric says good stuff coming up. Yeah, it's solid good stuff here at uh, HVAC training videos. We try to plan ahead here as much as possible. Half those people will probably cancel and I'll look like an idiot. I'm just kidding. Hopefully that won't happen. All right. We're going to do a little commercial real quick for refrigeration technologies. Then I'm going to come back here with Paul and we're going to talk refrigeration press fittings. Refrigeration Technologies makes some of the best HVAC chemicals around. And that includes wet rag heat blocking putty that prevents your vital system components from being damaged while you're brazing. Also, there's nylog, gasket and thread sealant, a variety of uses including sealing up flares, gaskets, and other HVAC joints and connections. Last but not least, there's Viper Aerosol Cleaner. I use it on evaporator coils. It foams up beautifully, does a great job cleaning. So if you need anything in the HVAC chemical arena, 
Choose Refrigeration Technologies. You can find out more at refridgetech.com and purchase at truetechtools.com. Okay, we're back, and here I have Paul here. What's happening, Paul? Zach, what's going on, my man? How you doing tonight? Nothing. I'm just chilling on a Friday night like I always do, talking about air conditioners. It seems kind of silly when you when you say it like that, but it's actually a lot of fun. How are you this evening? Hey, I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm good. I'm really, really good. And it's really exciting because this is a product that I've actually used. So I feel like I have the know. Sometimes I have people on the show and I'll talk about something. I might not have that firsthand knowledge of it, but I actually got to use this product and I was I was satisfied with it. I never had an issue with fittings leaking. Now we're not talking about some crazy experimental action you try to put on like the bell cutting off people for the service valves. I don't know if you know about the guys who cut off the bells and try to put the uh, the fittings directly onto the units. And oh, sometimes yeah. they oh, cut yeah. a little bit too much and there's not enough room left. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about standard yeah. usage. <laughs> <laughs> so what what did you first use an RLS fitting on? What what kind of job? Okay, so the one I remember, I don't know if it was the first one. Here, I, I remember two in particular. I had to change out a piston, which is a little orifice that an air conditioner has in it, and actually a heat pump has one too on the outside, and that's the one I changed out because, and I don't know if you're aware of this, several years ago, Copeland compressors had an issue where the rust inhibitor clogged up a lot of the metering devices and caused a whole bunch of warranty issues across the industry. And one of the issues that I experienced, in fact, the only issue that I experienced was one of these little pistons, which have a tiny hole in it, got clogged up, I had to switch it out. I had to also switch out the dryer. So at that point, I replaced the dryer that I had put outside the unit with one of the fittings that were compatible with the couplings. And I put the couplings on both sides and I switched it out. That was a simple job. And then I replaced an evaporator in a Goodman gas pack. And I used fittings on that too, but that was kind of a mix of different skills because I had to braze part of that. And then I used the fittings on the dryer, just like before, and uh, some of the other fittings inside of the unit. So I've used several of them. So did you do it just to save time? Was you saving time? Was you, I mean, what, what was the reason to use it? Because you wanted to try them? Well, we always I, ask these questions. Well, for me, because, and you know, this is the worst word in the world. It makes it sound like you're on TikTok or something, but as an influencer, as what oh, they call okay. it. Oh gotcha. my gosh. I, yep. you know, I wanted to try it out. And part of that is seeing how much time it did save. And of course it does save time over brazing, even with whatever procedure you're employing, because brazing involves a procedure all its own and heating of the fitting and annealing of the copper and all that stuff. It did save time. Uh, on the package unit, I probably could have thought ahead a little bit better than I did because I didn't have all the fittings that I needed. So I kind of shot myself in the foot. And the overall theme of it was, let's try this, at that time, really new tool. That was the idea. This was, I don't know which year it was, but it was three, four years ago at least. Yeah, so, you know, if you look at 2015 when RLS started, we, we launched the company with 16 SKUs. So today we have 125. Now, some of them, you know, we launched knowing we were going to work on them later, but a lot of it was the market telling you what they wanted, and you didn't, you know, you, you don't know what they want until you launch a product. Mm -hmm. and start hearing feedback and all the stuff you get by launching products like 45 elbows, you know, stuff like that was, you know, if you look at this line up here, bushings, 45s, you know, uh, multiple reducers that we didn't have when we first started, that's all the market telling you, Hey, I got to step up. I got to double step down all the things that they do because once they pull out the torch, you know, that they have to use it and, and then they don't have to use any fitting. So, you know, sometimes there's a mixture. Sometimes there's guys that don't want to pull it out at all. And, you know, the lineup, you know, is, is what they're for. So, so that's what you're trying to do is just help them out from top to bottom where, you know, if they don't have to pull a fire permit at all, they, you know, it's, they've got everything they need. And that's that's an ongoing thing. I mean, we, we always look at those SKUs. Um, you know, the larger sizes coming out, you know, later this year, earlier this year really is is listening to the market saying, you know, hey, we need some more things. So just constantly developing more. What What's the new sizes that are coming out later this year? So inch and five eighths and two and an eighth. Yep. So there'll be uh, anywhere from 12 to 16 SKUs. It, it really reducers, T's, couplings, 90s. Well, let me ask you a question. I'm going to bring the picture back up here. And you see the tool is in the background there, guys. For those who might not be familiar with these, the press fittings are up front there. And, yes, that's a flare over there, too. 
that's the one that always got me. There's a flare too. Yeah, we never launched with flares. Uh, the market, you know, told us that's what they wanted. It, those are some of the top sellers now for VRF guys. That's what blows my mind. In fact, the, the flares, and we'll get back to the flares in just a second. I just want to mention the tools because whenever I was working with the product at the time, there was, I think, a, like a 15 kilonewton and a 19 kilonewton tool. Yeah, so, yep. So the 15 we launched with up to inch and an eighth, and it took a 15 kilonewton compact tool. So when we launched inch and three eighths, we had to go up to the 19. Um, and a lot of guys don't, you know, they don't press above inch and an eighth. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a skew that we'll always have. We sell the jaws uh, every single month and, and some guys don't mind those smaller tools, but the larger you go in sizes, obviously the more force you need. And uh, so we'll step up the 32 kilonewton here shortly. Okay. That was you my know, question. It, yeah, because of the yeah, bigger pipe sizes. Or, or, you know, a guy doesn't, I mean, the goal is not to get him to get tools, you know, have to buy another tool if they've already got, say, like a rigid 300 series gun in their hand and they want to try refrigeration press, you know, the goal is not to get them, you know, buying more stuff. So, I mean, they, they have enough investments already. Yeah, absolutely. So there's rigid tools that work with these. There's now, do you still work with Clowkey? Is that the tool? Uh -huh. that, okay. Yep. So Clowkey, who else does? Does Milwaukee have a tool for these? Yeah, they'll launch at some point in 2021 as well. Okay, so there's three so different that, companies that make the tools right there. Yep, so they'll be on the M18. Now, as far as the torque or the kilonewton uh, rating of these, do they are they all going to have a tool that's capable of crimping the new inch and five eighths and two and one eighths, or is that just going to be a particular tool? So those will be ring designs, just like some of the larger plumbing tools. So you'll have a ring and it's, uh, but yes, it's, it'll be the larger platform tools. that will press them. Okay. You won't be able to press those fittings with, uh, the compact series guns. Yeah. That's a tall order right there. Two and an eighth is a, is a big pipe for me. I was yeah, I residential. Mean, so two and an eighth, like that's all the pipes put together, make two and an eighth. Yeah. I mean, they look like Coke cans. I mean, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that's not far off actually. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, I know we got off kind of running here. So let's go back and just give us like the quick history of RLS. Cause you said they started, you told me beforehand they started in 2015. So just tell me why did the company appear in the first place? So, you know, RLS is a, honestly just a group of metallurgists and mechanical engineers uh, that were tasked with, it's a question that always came up just like a medical gas fitting. That's a question that gets asked for every fitting company generally every piping company that, that, that handles connections is medical gas. Well, the, you know, that was just HVAC, say six, seven, 10 years ago. Uh, a lot of the water guys were asked, hey, when are you gonna come out with a refrigeration fitting? Uh, so we listened to the market and developed, I think we filed patents in 2012 or were granted in 2012 and we launched a company in 15 uh, under, the original Zoomlock brand. So we partnered up with Parker Sporland in the beginning. Uh, yeah, but it was just a, a group of metallurgists and mechanical engineers designing a system to, to connect refrigerant piping. What is the oldest fitting in place? Is it from 2015 or is it ones you experimented with beforehand still up and running? Yeah, so we have some that were, and it's all the equipment in our own facilities, obviously, but yeah, 2011, 2012, they go back as, and they're still on the systems today. Well, that means that that has been in place for 10 years, roughly. Yep. What is the expected life? And I'm going to bring up another video. I'm just going to bring up a coupling to look at here. What is the expected life? If you install this bad boy right here, how long is it going to last for you? So last year we went from two years to 10 years on our warranty. And honestly, I mean, we look at this every day. It, it's, you know, we, we try to stretch it to... 15, 20, 50. I mean, look at just piping in general, but it's really just around the, the ceiling element. Um, you know, the shelf life, and this is widely known. I mean, you can look it up. I mean, the shelf life of an O-ring is 15 years and that's an outside air, but you look at a fitting, it's, you know, it's not getting outside air. So, you know, we will continuously look at that warranty. We, we've, we've talked about it internally, uh, you know, most recently is within a month and looking at trying to stretch that warranty, you know, out further to the life of whatever system that's on and honestly to the piping. So, you know, how long does the pipe last? I mean, that's our goal is to, to warranty it out to the pipe because you start connecting refrigerant piping, 
and just say the system fails, you know, you're not changing all the piping, you're, tr you're just changing the system. So, you know, that's the goal. And it's something we look at all the time. And the O-rings are H&BR O-rings? Yeah, so it's just, you know, yeah, it's an industrial gasket um, that's, you know, goes down to, I don't know, 30, 35F, all the way up to 300. It's an industrial seal that's widely known for its use and, you know, uh, I don't know, glycol, all the refrigerants. It's a commonly used seal for all for all kinds of those industrial applications. Now, that's a that's a good question. Now, we, we wrote down some questions or I had some ready for you, and I'm going to kind of skip ahead to what I was thinking about. When you're talking about, let's compare, because press fittings have the HNBR O-ring inside of, or at least yours does. I know some of the other ones, yeah. like the chlorinated one, they don't have an H. NBR O ring, do they? Nope, it's neoprene. Yep. So the chlorinate, like R22, has uh, neoprene. So it's, yeah. So HMBR is everything I would say other than R22. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a common sealing elastomer, really, when it comes down to it. Now, how would you compare? What would be your opinion of the comparison between one of these fittings and like any compression fitting that's already in a air conditioning system or an air conditioning system that has like a Teflon seal in it or something like that. How does it, com how does it compare to that? Well, it, I mean, Teflon's a good seal. So ball valves, uh, ball valves have Teflon seals. At least the ones we sell are all Teflon. Mm -hmm. it, honestly, not much, I don't know, not much different. So if you expect that to be around for the life of a unit, there's no reason not to expect your fitting to be around at least that long as well. Yeah, as long or longer, really. I mean, they're silicone, uh, you know, they're silicone covered so that when you insert the tube, it obviously has lubricity to it. But yeah, I mean, silicone's a protectant and it's sealed completely from outside air. So it's it's really not seeing anything. And I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and put this out here for some of the guys I was talking about. I'm going to zoom in for a second. There's not enough silicone in the world not to deburr the copper. Yeah, no, no, yeah. It's our it, that's our number one um issue internally is you know, it's a it's a quick fitting, it's fast, and if you don't take proper steps uh with deep scratches, gouges, you know, really just bad bad defects in copper tubing, you know, it's it you have to clean it just like anything else and and if you do that, I mean, it's it'll last as long as a braised joint. And hopefully people are doing this with the piping already, even for brazing, you want to clean it off anyway. So it kind of people who, <clears throat> excuse me, don't have to have an issue with maybe one of the fittings leaking are probably not having the correct procedure all across the board, I would think, with brazing. Because you're supposed to be, well, you know, they say you don't have to technically clean that well with brazing, but I always clean pretty well. I want nice shiny copper every time I fit it together, no matter what. Yeah, so when we have uh, complaints or field complaints, you can generally see real quick if someone has done that process. I mean, it's it's noticeable within seconds. It's like, uh oh, they haven't. You know, you can tell they haven't prepped the tube correctly. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, sharp copper will gouge a, you know, anything, and I'm gonna say any elastomer, it's gonna cut it, and it's it's pretty industrial too. So I mean, it's tough. It it can withstand some, you know, it can withstand a beating, but. Sharp copper, it's not going through. If you, you know, th these fittings are meant to fit pretty tight. Uh, and then when you press them, obviously there's a, there's deflection of 10, 12%. So yeah, it's a tight fitting. It's gotta be cleaned and deburred and all the things you would do to, to prep any normal copper. Well, I, I see it in the chat already over here and I'm gonna go ahead and go on to the next point here. Talking about how it compares with flares, brazing, soldering, and one of the first things, and we had talked about this, it says, like my silver, it, it never leaks many generations. Talk about silver solder, I guess. So let, let's start with flares. To me, flares are the mother load of leaks. Uh, that's just been my opinion. Well, <laughs> let me give all the HVAC guys some props out here. So let's start with brazing. If you, br oh, okay. a, a, a correctly brazed joint will never leak ever. I mean, that's, that's the, so if you look at ASHRAE, they did a study um, a f several years ago on just connections. So, so brazing was the, you know, th that was the control and then everything, every other connection. Um, so it was really just a connection study of refrigerant piping. So you had compression fittings, uh, mul any multi-piece fitting, 
and then you had press fittings. So that, that study's out there today. You can go see it. And then obviously brazing was the, uh, the control. But yeah, I mean, it's what it shows you is, you know, press fittings, if you look at some of the leak rates and, you know, press fitting guys don't like to talk leak, talk leak rates, but I mean, you're looking at, and they go based on one fitting, but you can have hundreds, if not thousands of fittings in an install and you're talking minor over years and years. So those, you know, those tables are out there. I mean, um, and people can see them, but yeah, the guy that in the comment section is correct. I, you know, silver solder, you know, it's, you know, that element's not, ever, it's, it's for life if, and, done, if done properly. And the anti braze guys can always revel in the fact that stay bright eight, a, a soft solder has more tensile strength than the brazing does because the brazing anneals the copper. Sure. Yeah. So there's some anti brazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know that there's any anti-brazing out here. I think everybody's just here to kind of learn more about this stuff. And I think it's interesting. And I, and I uh, I salute you for going right after brazing because brazing. And I did see that ASHRAE study because I remember looking at it. Because <clears throat> I think flares lost miserably is the reason yes, why I remember yep. that. So flares to me, I mean, we're talking about using a gasket in the flare. But the gasket is a metal. It's copper is the gasket in a flare. And you have, of course, the O-ring. So I... Well, I, flares are my lowest opinion, but we'll, we'll move on to like soldering. Have you studied the soldering, well, I mean, like silver solder, stuff like that? Yeah. So, I mean, okay. I thought you were talking about like soldering for water. I was going to say, you know, H, you know, brazing temperatures are double that. So, I mean, there's no code that allows that. Um, yeah, we have, you know, OEMs. I mean, sometimes they'll have silver solder uh, alloys that have as much as 40, 50% silver. And we're talking OEMs that produce many, many units per day or per hour. I mean, in brazing, you know, you're brazing. If something's coming down a line, you're brazing it within seconds and, and doing that just constantly. So, yeah, I mean, those those units in, are in refrigerators or wherever they all are. I mean, that, I mean, you buy a refrigerator, it, it's not going to leak. It's going to be there. I mean, it's going to be there for years. That's so, interesting you said refrigerator because that's more than likely going to be an A3 refrigerant now too. Uh -huh, most of the yep. refrigerators are going to be R290 or R600. And that was one of the things we were going to talk about is using those in the future here because in 2023, Carrier is going to be using R454B, which is going to be a mildly uh, flammable refrigerant. Will your product work with that refrigerant? Can you use it with that refrigerant? Uh, the, the short answer is yes. Um, so it's something that, you know, one thing RLS does as good as any company is, you know, the codes and standards we stay very close to, we work diligently with, and, uh, you know, it's just about strengthening codes and standards around any, any connection. Uh, but the short answer is yes. Yeah. I mean, it, the O-ring is compatible with those refrigerants. Uh, the pressures are, are, are fine with, um, I'm going to say UL207. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be no different than any other, say, uh, refrigerant used today, 410A, whatever it is. Now, at that point, is there any code or standard in place that would prevent people from using it in particular jurisdictions, to your knowledge? Well, like Chicago? Chicago would be the one that jumped out at me that we talked about okay, before. Okay, there you go. Yep. So yeah, Chicago, the city of Chicago is, is the only jurisdiction we know of today that doesn't allow press fittings. And some of that's political. Some, you know, some cities are slow to make changes. Uh, but yeah, we, we work with them every year or try. And it's, you know, it's just, a, you know, if you look at water press fittings that were introduced 30 years ago, I, you know, I don't think they're very uh, old into that market. I, I think they're being used finally, but I mean, it took 30 years to get, you know, the city of Chicago to use water press fittings. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it'll be a long road and, you know, it's something we stay on top of, but it's all about, you know, those things. I mean, so, some cities are slow to adopt and that obviously Chicago is one of them. Well, Chicago likes to test all the fittings, how missable they are with gunfire. Is what <laughs> I, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> They're not, I mean, no fitting is uh, good against gunfire. Uh, well, Okay, so you're telling me in 2023, you will be able to use these fittings on one of those carrier units as long as it's not in Chicago, basically. Correct. Yep. Okay. Now, does that extend to like our A3 refrigerants now? Let's say you have a small uh, refrigerator at a restaurant. You need to replace 
whatever, and you're going to use a couple couplings. Can you use that on one of their devices? Yeah, so Pepsi has propane now. So we call them all the ANES, right? The propanes, the isobutanes, mm -hmm. you know, just all, all the highly flammable, say, R290, R600. Um, and so, I, you know, the answer is yes, but there's a caveat to it. So A3s have UL, UL109, which which is really just a pull test. Um, because if you, you know, catastrophically, have, uh, uh, let's go with an earthquake or fires, you know, some of the worst things, you know, the, you don't want that leaking out in, in one of those. So there's pull test requirements with that, with that uh, code. But yeah, I mean, the short answer is yes. What does that mean, pull test? Uh, pu pulling the joint apart during, like I said, like an earthquake, a fire, a natural okay. disaster, you know, you have A3 flammable refrigerants in the line. And, and so, uh, you know, the, the UL 109 has a pull test requirement that you have to pass. Interesting. And what is, what is the smallest fitting you make? Because those quarter are all inch. small machines, quarter inch. Okay. Yep. Quarter, quarter inch. Um, yeah. Pepsi buys quarter inch, three eighths. So, uh, five sixteenths, yeah, all, all the small sizes. Well, Pepsi is a gigantic company, so that's a pretty good endorsement for using it in that application. Yeah, so Pepsi owns all their own equipment. So when it breaks down in the field, uh, they either have to truck it back to a hub. So there's lots of hubs all over the U.S. Um, or, and right now they're repairing them in the hub. But the you know long term strategy there is to try to repair that in the field uh, where you're not taking that you know, three, $400, whatever that costs to get that piece of equipment back to a hub. And that technician can fix it right on site because you can't pull a torch. out. I mean, take Walmart or take, take one of the big guys. You're not pulling out a torch in Walmart. Uh, you know, they're not going to let you do it. So they have to take their equipment back to, a, you know, 30, 40, 200 miles, whatever the hub distance is and, and repair it there and put it back in the field and service. It's an interesting point right there. I never had an opportunity to work at a Walmart because my limit's five tons in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and that would take a lot of machines to cool a Walmart five tons. Yeah. Well, not the Pepsi machine. It's, you know. Well, not, yeah, not the Pepsi before, machine. Right? Yeah. I'm thinking of the RTUs for some reason. I, and I'm just going to yeah. go ahead and tell you, Paul, there's been like a ton of different questions and comments so far that we're going to have to get to. So okay. if you're willing, let's like hit one more of our subjects and we'll hit some of these questions that have piled up. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about popular, popular. let me say the word right, popular applications. We just mentioned that you can use them in these small appliances. Uh, you open it up to all different kinds of refrigerants, except for toxic refrigerants, obviously. We don't go that far. But there, I'll say that you don't go to toxic refrigerants, I'm guessing. You don't have ammonia fittings or anything like that, do you? Uh-uh. No, no. Okay, I just want to make sure before I go spouting off that you didn't do it, I'm going to check with you real quick. Okay. Oh, no, yeah. So... What is your number one demographic part of the trade that buys these? So without a doubt, VRV, VRF. So if you look at a VRF install, there's tons of refrigerant piping, which means there's lots of connections. And so, you know, that's where the time savings is. Um, it's either that or pulling fire permits in schools, hospitals, things like that. But the overall number one thing is is a VRF uh, system or, or multi-story where there's lots of mini splits, uh, where there's just lots of connections. Uh, that, that's really the the market. And if you look at our SKUs, you can see that it's heavily, you know, it's, I'm going to say three eighths to five eighths up to half inch. It's all those VRF lines that they're, they're brazen or brazen or pressing, I should say. And they're the ones using these like T's and splitters and things like that, I'm assuming. Yep. The flares, that's all commercial VRF. It's a big market. The flare blew my mind. I'm not going to take too much time, you know, with my awe of the flare. But whenever I saw that, I was like, I'm never going to use that. And I didn't use it a whole lot because I don't do a whole lot of flare work. But then my buddy Ralph comes along and some other guys are like, the flare is our favorite thing. I was like, what? It's like they love the flare most of all because the flare is perfectly made and they don't have to make a flare. That was their thing. So I don't yeah, know if that's a feedback you got. Well, contractors have told us um, that it's it's the best flare in the market because when you tighten it to the specifications, it's perfect. Now, it, a technician would have to dive into that further for me. But, yeah, it's a, it's a common thing we get told. Yeah, that's what, that's what they all said. These are technicians with torque wrenches. So they, they know what they're doing. Yep. 
All right, let's get to some of these questions here before I don't know how many there are going to be once I get back to the bottom. Let's see. Eric Kaiser, he's a guest of this show, asks, how does water freezing in the crimp outside of the O-ring affect the crimp? So has there been any issues with water freezing in the crimp where the little, I don't know if we have a picture that's going to show that. Um, like the part that's on the exterior yeah, of the fitting nope. between that and the copper tubing. So good question. It's a question we've never been asked, but here's the answer. So if you look at the press design from RLS, okay, this is soft copper. So if you used to throw this fitting across the room, it would dent. And, and so that's a, so number one for everyone, that's a, that's a good thing. You know, it's not a hard fitting to start it soft. So we anneal it to a soft. And so when you press that joint, that double circular press 360 metal to metal connection, there's nothing busting that. I mean, these fittings, you take a quarter inch fitting, it's going to go to 6,500 PSI. So there's no water. One, water can't get in there. And two, even if you was to put in there, it would never have the pressure to break those two circular bands. Because when you mechanically work hard in copper, it, it goes from soft copper to hard. So that's what we call that work hard and joint. That's what we mean by that. You're taking an annealed piece of copper and you're pressing it and that joint now is hard copper. And the test that I saw on this, of course, it was back when it was uh, the Zoom Lock was doing the test, but it was your product. They would, I think, pump it up to about 4,000 PSI, and then always the pipe broke, never the fitting. It was always the pipe that busted. So that they're designed like that. So the thickness of an RLS press fitting is always thicker than the copper that you're pressing it to, so it's never going to fail before the tube. It's designed like that. Yeah, the tube is always going to fail first. And that's what happened every single time because we kept watching it over and over again. At uh, where was that? I guess I was at Atlanta when we went to AHR. Where we yeah, saw that. yeah. So it's a popular thing that it, it, people want to see it firsthand. Um, it's very common to watch a new guy press a press fitting and step back five feet. You know, it, it, it's funny to watch some of it, but <laughs> yeah. you know, they yeah. you just don't. You know, it's you know they've never been around press fittings that hold high pressure. You know, so yeah, that was the general. That everybody was like, like that. Yep, moving no, away. It's not. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, the next one is from Tony Del Grego. He says, "What about push type fittings? Now, do you guys make any push type fittings?" No. So if you look at like, uh, there's Rector Seal has a push fitting. Essen in Korea uh, distributes their push fitting through Zoom Lock Push, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean they're they're just multi piece. Um, yeah, we do not have a push fitting. So. You know, if he was to go back five or six years ago, you know, us RLS guys, you know, we look at push fittings, uh, and honestly, we didn't think they'd ever take traction because, you know, the market adopted RLS press fitting slow, and and we're, I'm gonna say, certainly hesitant at first until they got familiar with them. So push fittings, um, yeah, there's no tool, so. You know, contractors, that's one of the barriers to entry is, I mean, the tools aren't cheap. They're three, four, you know, I'm going to say twenty-five to $3,500 with JAWS. And, you know, they have to make an investment. So, if they, you know, it's probably a residential market. Um, we call them refrigeration shark bites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that <laughs> has a called, negative uh, connotation to it. I, mean, I assume that the pressure they hold would be less. If you can physically fit the, the fitting together, with your man strength, then how can that be as good as something that has a 19 kilonewton tool fitting it together? Yeah, you're pressing it with 3,000, yeah, 3,000 pounds, three, 4,000 pounds. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, something's biting into it to keep it to hold. And in you know, some push fittings, you can't remove and some you can. So, um, you know, we're always, you know, it's, I, the market's got to test those and, and, you know, the market will let that play out for sure. Yeah, I'm going to imagine a balloon whizzing around the room going, Pfft. that's what yeah. I'm going to imagine. Now, that may or may not be true, but if I can put a fitting together with my arm, I'm not going to trust it as much as when I use a tool, no matter how much the tool costs. Uh, let's see, push type fitting, let's see. Mm. Um. <laughs> there's more There's more comments on how long brazing lasts. We, it lasts a long time. We got it. It's the gold standard. Let's see. Will it is the gold standard. It's the gold standard. You, you're always going to know. How, I mean, for for a technician, they they are never ever gonna uh, not know how how to break something. It's you know it's these are just alternatives to save time, not pull a fire permit. You know, make an install cleaner, easier, repeatable. 
you know, it's, it's all those things. Um, but yeah, it's just an alternative. Do you know how much, and I don't know this, that's why I'm asking you, how much a fire permit costs? I don't. Uh, it's a question for the guys out there. That it, I'm, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. I know it's, I, th I thought it was a few thousand dollars and it's, it's a pain. I've never had it's, to do that because in the, my corner of the trade, fires, you know, it doesn't have to be permitted. We can just braze away in residential. But. Yeah. So they, uh, it, it's like I said, it's our number, some of our number one issues is, hey, man, I don't have to pull a fire permit. So I don't know. You'd have to ask one of the guys on the chat uh, what it costs because then there's, you're paying labor to watch it and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure it's not cheap. Well, the the spotter, you know, you're going to pay him X amount of dollars per hour, so he's going to, you know, bleed you dry slowly. Uh, Tony Del Grego asks, will the jaws work on the rigid pro press? Same tool for pro press, the rigid tool, and you mentioned that a second ago, correct? Yeah. So right now they work on the compact series rigid guns, so the two, two ten, uh, but all the three hundred series, you know, we'll have jaws for those. Late, I'm going to say. Uh, Q1, early Q2, we'll have 32 kilonewton jaws with Milwaukee and, um, and, and rigid. So yeah, those, those jaws will be available for the larger tools. So within the next year or so, you'll have jaws for whatever tool people have more or yeah, less. It'll be a, yes. And it'll be within, I'm going to say three or four months. It'll all be ready. Okay. Oh, well, that's excellent. Uh, will justice says, will the jaws work on the Milwaukee M12 press tool or just the M18 press tool? No. So uh, right now we sell rigid jaws that are compatible with the M12. So Milwaukee will launch jaws that are work with the M18. Okay. Well, there you go. That's all the questions we had piled up right there. I think we're good. We can go right back over to what we were talking about. Since I was talking about my illustrious residential career, just, just lightly there, I want to ask you the question here, straight up, just using the tool in residential, is it going to be cost effective? Uh, you know, if you look at a traditional residential job where you're talking, I'm going to say less than five connections, I, you're looking at condenser evaporator, one line set, or maybe two. Uh, it all depends how much you want to, how much time you want to spend in a crawl space or attic. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, we're talking 20 bucks. What's $20 worth to you? I mean, that's the cost of the fittings. And if you do a lot of those a year, then the tool pays for itself. So the answer is, yeah, it's cost effective. Um, and it's just getting you out of places you want to be out of quicker, really, honestly. Yeah. And with the residential VRF taking off, well, they call everything VRF now, but residential VRF, you might have a multi-head system, just like a miniature version of the commercial stuff you're talking about. So you might be 10, 20, 30 fittings on that one. So that's a, that would, would you say that's a no brainer then when you get to that level of fittings? Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and you're looking at the box too, the electronics. I mean, that's what they want to keep the torch away from. Um, so yeah, no, those are, those will be markets for us for and sure. I, and I'll comment this. Whenever I uh, was doing jobs that were, well, out of my residential scope, I had a few commercial buildings and we'll say multifamily. So it's, it's almost residential. I would do these jobs and change these wall mount air handlers out, which are just small ones, you know, 18,000 BTUs, 24,000 BTUs, and above every single one of these bad boys was a sprinkler or a fire alarm. And <laughs> boy, I would sweat it out. No fire permit necessary, but you know, I was clinched and waiting. Yeah. And yeah, I've set them off before. Her. I've set off the fire alarm in a multifamily dwelling of like 25 apartments and they had to evacuate the building. And I'm going to tell you what, a fitting's definitely worth that. Yeah. <laughs> that was an embarrassing day for myself. As a one man company, the entire company looked very bad that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's some of the, you know, mentioning that, it's not just about the cost of it then. So you're saying that there's a convenience factor and there's a peace of mind factor. As well, what is t what is time worth? I mean, it, this is really the the answer is what is your time worth? And if you can whip out a torch and brace it real quick, I mean, then, then it's the same amount of time. But if you're in an attic, like I said, I mean, we get lots of pictures from those guys where they're, you know, in a tight space in an attic in the summertime where it's hot, you know, and they're and they're able to get in and out quick. Or if you got multiple jobs, you know, we know a lot of residential guys that install a lot of stuff, and uh, you know, they love it. Uh, but it's really all about that. It's, you know, what's, what's your time worth? Uh, and sometimes 
you know, you got plenty of time. Sometimes you don't. So that's really in a nutshell, the answer to the question is, you know, if, if, if you're willing to invest in a tool, uh, and, and you like the time, you're going to use it. And that's the, really the biggest cost will be that initial investment of setting up and you'll want to, well, like someone like me, that is a single man company that maybe does one or two change outs a month and then does service calls. Would, would I be on the line for having, well, I won't say no use, but not needing to buy something like you're selling? You know what I'm saying? Where's the line? Because there's going to be some guys out there that are not a fit. So where's that line at? Do you see it no, as the whole I, trade can use it? Or do you see that there's going to be a guy who does just some random jobs that's just not going to work for? Oh, I would say that service guy that doesn't do very many. Yeah, I would say a crossover plumbing or mechanical where you're predominantly plumbing and you're dabbling in HVAC, that guy probably. Um, well, that's what I don't know. I mean, if you give them a tool, uh, we do this all the time, just, you know, just one because, you know, we like contractors. But, you know, if you give a guy a tool and he doesn't invest, and it's free to him. He, they use press fittings all the time. So it always tells us that's the barrier. It's the tool. You know, it's not, has nothing to do with how many press fittings you install a year. If you give them a free tool, they will start using your technology no matter what they're doing. And sometimes they, you know, some of these guys will only buy a hundred a year, hundred fittings a year. Right. Yeah. And so those guys always reach out to us going, Hey, we appreciate it. They'll send you pictures of the job. So it's the tool. I mean, no one wants to spend you know, twenty five to thirty five hundred dollars on a tool. Well, that's what I that's what I call my salesman test. Because if there's a person that says there's no possible way that someone could not use this tool, I naturally don't believe them in anything. <laughs> but I, yeah, you I know, mean, there is that you say there there is going to be guys out there like if you're a straight up service technician because the fittings are not going to come into play because you don't sell four way valves. Because that would be a nightmare to try to stock every single tiny service part or TX fees or something like that. Sure. Is there something, I won't say is there an oddball fitting, but like expansion devices. Have you ever considered or is there in the work some way to make expansion devices compatible with that, like TX fees so, or something? Yeah, so that's a good question because what we try to do, you know, this industry has been brazen for 100 years. So the challenge in 2015 launching, was nothing as compatible with a fitting. Not, I mean, it took time to get all the ancillary lines compatible. You know, obviously the the service valve on residential is still not not on diameter. So the first company that comes out with ODM, well, I mean, I, I, we've had contractors say, "I'll buy that over anything else in the market." Uh, so yeah, this you know what you have to do is get. Every manufacturer, compressors, whatever it all is, is is compatible. I mean, that was one of our problems with Pepsi in the beginning. Is yeah, they wanted to use press fittings, but the nothing was compatible. Dryers, right? You know, uh, you know, they're fixing the compressors, and it's you know, you're fighting a hundred years of uh, you know manufacturing. So, yeah, we, you know, we're working with Daikin right now on coming out with uh, RLSNs on certain things. And yeah, I mean, our, we'll always keep working with those guys. And really the drive comes from the end user. It's not a manufacturer trying to, you know, force, you know, something to change. It's gotta be the market changing it. It's not, I mean, we, we're there to help, but the more contractors that, that ask for more things, that's how, that's how you get true change. It's the whole, the whole community asking for it, not just the manufacturer. Not just Brent Ridley. Basically. Yeah, or Paul Schubert. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Brent. Really, I know who was saying that when you said that. He actually said to me, "If they come out with a unit, I don't care what it is. I think what he says. I don't care if Nordine comes out with a unit that has yeah. a straight end on it. I'm buying that unit." Yep. And I thought I was thinking about that. That's been said multiple times. So you know, it's but it's it's made in a factory somewhere. It's a certain skew and. You know, you got to make two of them now or, or have different models. And yeah, no, it's, I mean, we manufacture stuff. We hate, you know, you hate too many SKUs. Yeah. That, that's where the whole service conversation was. Cause you'd have what a thousand different parts you'd have to make. Sure. For, and that's just a nightmare. So you had to get the most you can get within reason, I guess. And you said what you had 120 something. Yeah. hundred hundred 125. 125. Yep. So that's, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. We look at a little picture here still. I mean, we got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, just ten pieces right there, and there's yeah. So you're going from yeah, you're going from quarter inch to inch and three eighths on every single one of those fitting families. Um, and then obviously reducers have you know one step, two step sizes. So yeah, there's that's how you get up to 125 pretty quick. Yeah, I can imagine that because you always want to add something to reach another part of the market. I guess that's just an urge; it's always going to be there. You said, "Oh, we need to add this, then we can get this guy over here would be part of it." Then it's just cost effectiveness, I guess. You got to yeah, reach who yep. you can reach and still stay in business. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's you know, see. couplings in '90s make up you know 85 percent of our business. So you know, if you look at and we sell millions of them. So you know, if you, you look at those volumes and they're couplings in '90s, and then the, all the rest is kind of filler stuff that that people need to, like I said, keep the torch off you know in the truck or off the job, and you know, so all that has to be available for them. Absolutely, I can imagine the VRF guys running thousands of feet of pipe and coupling 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 yep. just going really quick through it so i'm going to put a picture up on the screen now and you're going to kind of detail what we're looking at oh okay so yeah so if you look at what we call H hvac refrigeration press fittings so this is what this invention was and the design um is that double circular metal to metal connection and it's, it's, it's very different from what we call water fittings or modified water fittings where you're hexagonally, uh, pressing or you're, you're pressing on top the O-ring groove. Uh, and you can kind of see that upper picture where, you know, it's not solid metal to metal contact. So there's a point and it's all that hex press system. So if you look at water, you know, it, it, the water guys that, that come into the space will either enhance that ID they're putting teeth on the inside or what we call hooks and they're just driving that hook into the pipe and that's how they get those pressures but you know sometimes they're limited in sizes they're you know the offerings aren't there but yeah i mean it's very visible to see a you know an hvac refrigeration invention versus what we call modified water inventions well when i look at this picture i look at the top and naturally when you look at the top it's like man that thing looks like it's been in a car accident because it just is it's indented everywhere. And I'm not saying that's good or bad or going to affect how much or X percentage, but I'm just looking at the copper pipe going into the top fitting and how it bevels down into the fitting. I mean, how much capacity is lost passing through there? How much, I won't say restriction, but turbulence or almost like an increased static pressure like we would talk about for duct work because a round smooth pipe will be the best. So does this hurt you, the one on top? I know you guys have tested a million different things there. Does it hurt you in refrigerant flow? Well, I mean, it, we have always said if you're pressing on round copper, then your design should be round. And that's, you know, that's a design we put out, you know, five, six, well, it's going on six years now. And, uh, you know, anytime that you're connecting tubing, whether it's short radius 90s where you're necking down and, and restricting flow, yeah, that's, you just, you got to design around it. Um, but, you know, with our technology, you don't, it's really just plain and simple. And the reason why I mentioned that too is because you, you said the, something very important there. You have to design around stuff like this and nobody does. So it's nice if, if nobody's going to do something, you just install a product where you don't have to think about that. That'd be the best. Correct. Yep. And looking at this here, you see on the top one now, stop me if I'm wrong. Uh, this is the Maxi Pro. This is a Connex product. And the jaw is going to fit either side of that O ring and crimp down. Now, on yours, it's done a little bit differently. Yeah. So there's a flare. So there's very, there's, very unique things you look for in refrigeration press. And it's, it's that flare. So you're taking the, you know, you're taking the tool and you're resting it on the flare and you're setting it on, on the O-ring groove and then you're circularly pressing down. So the best way to describe this is a pair of Chinese handcuffs. You know, those finger Chinese mm -hmm. handcuffs you used to play with as a kid. That That's what this fitting's doing. Uh, obviously, that's an exaggerated thing, but that's kind of what it's doing. It's pressing it down and out, pulling that flare and making it the, the tightest mechanical joint in the industry without question. So when you say tightest mechanical joint, what does that mean? The least amount of the leak rate or the area around the joint? How, what is that? How is that quantified? Uh, just pressures, highest pressures. Do you know the difference? I, I know you do. 
the difference between pipe B on the bottom and pipe A. It's like a t- Pepsi taste test or something. It's- yeah, so uh, inch and three eighths fitting for RLS will go to about three thousand psi. So the top one, uh, will it'll pass UL two hundred seven obviously at twenty one, but that's that's the limit. Okay, so thirty four, thirty five hundred compared to twenty one hundred. Yep. So UL two hundred seven requires twenty one hundred p. You have to hold it for a minute. So there's a strength portion of that test and a fatigue portion. So you got to cycle it hundreds of thousands of times, which is the fatigue part. But where press fittings fail is the strength side. So you rapidly push it up to from zero to 2100 within a minute. And then you ha- it has to hold for a minute. So all technology, you have to start with that side of that test because that's where you'll fall down. So when, when you launch larger sizes, you know, that's, that's important. You, and that's why it takes time is... You know, when you put inch and five eighths and two and an eighth in the field, it, you can't have a failure. I mean, it is, you know, it's it's not going to happen. What part of these fittings ultimately fails during these tests? Uh, it slips. So, you know, if you look at, I'm going to say t- the top or bottom doesn't matter. It's going to slip and uh, it fails by, uh, I'm, we're calling it, it fails pull out or blow out. Uh, is same type of O-ring on both? Yep, correct. All HNBR, correct. So the difference, would I be right in saying the difference is the technology that's pressing it and the way it's pressed? Correct, yep. Okay. And just yeah, because... Yeah, so it's hexagonal is, is that water. It's I mean, that's what presses water. So you're taking, you know, we're going to call, I, I'm always going to say this, but modified plumbing fittings where you're modifying the ID to bite into the copper using the exact same press design well it, it doesn't look not even joe my buddy joe was in the chat over there and he's like i'm surprised the square shape on either side of the o-ring still allows for a proper seal but i'm guessing it's just dragging that copper in enough to get that thing seated but it just it it, it doesn't look natural <laughs> i'm just gonna say it's it looks so rough and to me i see it from a standpoint of refrigerant flow but not even from the whatever it seals whatever level of pressure it seals but it's just the flow it seems like it'd be interrupted so badly with that but I had to look at the inside. I don't have a picture of the inside, but I do want to put a picture up of the jaws themselves, how they're fitting on there. Kind of go along with what you're saying. You could see where it's uh, the jaw is fitting. Whereas on the fitting on the top up there on the Connex fitting, that that jaw would be moved to the right and fit over the O-ring then, correct? Yeah, so this is a common mistake on our fitting too, is you know a lot of guys that are used to pressing water um, will try to press on the O-ring because it feels natural to do. Uh, but it's it's completely opposite with ours. Yeah, you want the the O-ring is just a sealing element that you're cinching in tight, but it's really about that metal to metal double circular press that that's that that work hardens that joint from hard uh, from soft to hard copper. And so so once you have that, you know the 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 O-ring is just there to seal. It's it's just that's all it's doing. It's not for strength. It's nothing. Now, just one last question. I'm going to show you another picture in just a minute. But of the two fittings, how long has it? Well, how long has the Connex fitting been out compared to yours? Because yours has been out for um, ten years, roughly. Then almost. Yeah. So the new their new design was changed in July of last year, June or July of last year. So it's relatively new then. Yep. But I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying that it's it's new comparatively, so you don't have that period of study so to speak. But then, then again, everybody's fitting was new at one point, so you can't just naturally say that it's awful either. Uh, I'm just kind of curious how long they've been out in the field and been tested. And wasn't it from the UK as well? Is that right? Yeah, so, yep. Mm-hmm. Connex Manager is, is based out of uh, the UK. And where is RLS made? So right in the heartland. So we, we're about our manufacturing um uh, plan is about two hours north of St. Louis. And are all your products made there? No. So the ancillary line there, there are, you know, we buy those from NDL. So, I mean, you can buy them. I don't, I don't know if you can buy them direct from NDL, but yeah, we partnered up with NDL uh, to supply our ancillary line because honestly we feel they're the best in the business. I mean, you know, RLS is the best press fitting on the market and we do not sacrifice anything. So the ancillary line will, is the same way. And you're talking about Teflon seals, 
not copper plated steel. It's pure copper. It's all the things that, you know, honestly we demand. So it's, they're a great partner. And one last picture, because I want to make sure we show all of our pictures. It's important to me. Yeah. So there's, yep. There's, there's a typical, uh, picture of what, you know, what a fitting that was designed for HVAC and one that's designed for water. Short radius versus long radius. And like I said, to the guys out there listening to this, you know, one of the reasons why I'm talking to Paul is because first of all, I've used the product before. So I know the product works and I know there's certain advantages and things that have been thought out that might not have been thought out in other parts of the industry. And this is one of the things right here. When you have a long radius elbow, that tells me you're concerned about how things flow. And that's important because in an industry, whether it's talking about air or refrigerant, long radius is always going to be smoother than a short radius. Short radius is, as far as talking about total effective length, speak duck work, it's going to be a lot different. So I just thought I'd show that little difference right there. You can see the difference in the gaskets and stuff like that and compared to, like we showed the press tool a minute ago, how it fits on there. I'll show you one more time. Just bring it back so you can see it. You can see how it fits on there. So it's, it's the little things, Paul. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it's you have to think differently, right? We, you know, RLS was not a water press fitting company. You know, we were we designed it for HVAC, and you know, you just you're thinking outside the box. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it's hard, it's hard to it's hard to do that when you're innovating things. So a lot of times, if you're stuck with you know what you are what you already see, then you'll start modifying what you already have. And uh, you know that RLS didn't do that, or Cero Cero flow did not do that with RLS. Um, so yeah, that's why it's different. That's why it's, you know, they specifically designed it for HVAC and it, everything around it is, you can visibly see it. Now the guys that have your product back when you were branded with uh, Parker Sporlin, they have the tools and stuff. They need to get that product still. Yeah. So, so here's, here's the important thing with that is you know, your gun and your jaws are the exact same jaws that we sold. Um, so you don't have to do anything different. You go to your local supply house, you ask for RLS, there is no change. The only change is the name. There's there's nothing to do. You don't have to trade in your jaws. You don't have to do anything to it. it you're, you have you use the same thing you've always used. That's pretty simple. Now, name some of the places where you can find your product. Is that the same as it always was? Because I found it at United Refrigeration. That's where I bought all mine. Is it going to be in the same locations that you would have seen previously with your partnership? Correct. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you got, you know, you look at your national guys like Johnstone United. Yeah, those guys are on. You know, Webb is a, a great partner of ours in the Northeast, among many others. So, yeah, it's it's whatever local supply house uh, was in before. is in, It's in there now. Well, I almost forgot this too. I'm, I'm glad I didn't. But our buddies at True Tech Tools carries it now. Yeah, yeah, True Tech's good to us. We, uh, we, you know, they're they're a great fit for us. Uh, from from right off the bat, we, you know, we knew real quick that it's just like, okay, this is a, you know, just the way they talk, and you know, they they like to sell quality and and good things. So yeah, it's it was a natural fit for us. Yeah, those guys are top of the list to me. They're top shelf guys, and I'm just gonna put it out there. Shop talk discount code save eight percent. All right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so shameless. But you know, if you're gonna buy a bunch of fittings, you might as well save some money. <laughs> yeah, and then we've got a lot of things going on for contractors, right? And we're always gonna help those guys out. You know, we're, we have that five hundred dollar rebate going on right now, and we're you know we're gonna carry that on for a while. You know, we're looking at ways to incentivize contractors to buy fittings. So we're going to, you know, we may be launching that shortly. Uh, you know, you go to a supply house and buy fittings and RLS is going to help you out. So we're, you know, we're going to be doing that soon. And, you know, what, you know, we, you know, we are training modules live as of yesterday on the website, you go to our website, the train, you, know, you can go through the whole training module and we're going to start looking at winners there. So yeah, you know, keep an eye on RLS uh, as if you're a contractor technician. And you know, we got some good things going on that you guys can take advantage of. You can see the website there at the bottom of the screen, rapidlockingsystem.com. In case you're wondering, what does RLS stand for? Rapid Locking System. You probably figured that out already. And if you go to that website, I'm sure your training is one of the tabs that you'll see when you open that page up then. Yeah, we're going to make it on the main. It's going to be a tab on the main page. Uh, we're going to make that change just because some guys said, hey, let's make it on the main page so it's easy to find. But right now it's under resources, but we're, we're going to change that soon within a day or two. 
Okay. So it'll be real easy to find and uh, yeah, you can download your certificate and then, you know, look to see if you're a winner. We're going to, you know, put something in place for those guys that come in and train. I want to be a winner. I've already yeah. used a tool. I'm, I'm accredited in the field already. <laughs> <laughs> None of my joints leaked. That must be good. Uh, well, you know, to be honest with you, uh, I've been out of the field for the last short while anyway. So if my joints start leaking, I wouldn't know anyway. But uh, for the last several years, they've been just fine. That's why I'm so supportive of the product itself. Now I'm going to take that off the screen there. We're going to do our very stereotypical ending question here, unless we have some from the chat. Let me look. No. No, I already said Shark Bites for HVAC, Joe. He mentioned that. Not your product. Um, what is going to be next? What's the biggest thing coming soon for RLS? Well, I mean, the biggest things that we talked about for sure are larger platform jaws were uh, and larger size fittings. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we are working with technology that we're going to put in CO2. Uh, so, you know, it, you'll have to keep an eye on us for that. Medical gas is a question we get all the time. We're looking at that. You know, it's, it's you know, how do you take this press design and this technology and, uh, you know, be the innovator in the market? you know, for, for things like CO2, medical gas and all those things. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, bright ahead and, you know, we got a good team and, and honestly, they're doing a great job. So Paul, we're going to draw to an end right there. We've been going about an hour here and I really appreciate you coming on here, talking about this. We haven't done a real episode like this in a while. Usually we're doing principles like combustion analysis or static pressure. So it's nice to go back into the world of tools because I'm going to just tell you something. I love tools. I just love them to death. It don't have to be HVAC, any tool. I like it. You go to my shop, you can have proof of that. So, but I just want to thank you. I appreciate that. Is there some way that uh, they can contact you if they have questions about the tool? Like if someone wants to buy the tool, they have questions. What do they need to do? The easiest thing to do is email sales at rapidlockingsystem.com. So we, we will get you easily with that. But we are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I mean, we're, we're everywhere. Uh, me personally, I'm on all of them. Our sales team is on all of them. So you, if, if you type RLS or rapid locking system, you're going to find one of us on one of those platforms. So, you know, we're easy to reach out uh, and find. All right. Well, guys, I just want to, you know, the main part of this show, I'm going to sum it up. Just use my code at True Tech Tools. All right, if you're going to buy these expensive items, I want you to use it. Are the, are the, are the tools for sale? The actual oh, yeah. prepping tools? Oh, man, yeah. I can save you all a ton of money. Come on now. Make sure you use that code. I look really good when you do that. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Paul, I appreciate it, man. We'll have you on again. We'll think of some more subjects to talk about. We'll do some more on uh, some of the different refrigerants or something like that or new fittings or applications, something like that. We'll come up with something, but I just want to thank you for coming on the show. No, and hey, and Zach, you guys do a good job. You know, um, you know, it, it, it's a great thing to have. It, it's fun to talk about, and, you know, I appreciate the time. Absolutely. We do have a lot of fun. All right, Paul, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to do a little bit of my own rambling, and I just want to thank you one last time. Yep. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Have a great weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you, Paul. Bye. That was old Paul there, man. That was a lot of fun. We haven't talked about tools in a long time. Tools are wonderful. I really, really love them a lot. As you, you can't tell that already. All kinds of tools. I spent my day. Well, we can talk about it on the flip side here. We'll we'll play our other sponsor commercial here. Our buddies at Yellow Jacket. You can see me throw the scale around, which is always fun. For those of you who may have never seen it before, check it out. I'll see you on the flip side. The new Yellow Jacket scale, part number 68864, has a 220 pound capacity, a large platform, and wireless Bluetooth communication via the Wide Jack app. With a 0.05% accuracy and 0.2 ounce resolution, service technicians can count on precision measurements every time. Okay, guys, I want to thank Paul one last time here. Don't forget, after the show is over, go down into the description of this video and check all the stuff out that's down there. We've got a lot of links to a lot of different stuff. 
The Skill Trade Up, our fun game show where we win tools, is coming back here on the 27th. So that's about 12 days from now. And I'm souping up the prizes. We're taking it to the next level. We're going to have a Micron Gauge and some other stuff up for grabs. And it's going to be a little bit of a different game. We're going to do it a little bit less often and make the prizes a little bit better so it all evens out. So that's Skill Trade Up. That channel is linked in the description here. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We do this almost every single week, unless I'm taking the week off, which happens about once a month. Because, well, I'm going to tell you, honestly, if I take a day off from this, I'm probably doing something on a different channel instead to compensate for it. So don't worry about it. We are still doing some stuff on HVAC Shop Talk. I have comment sessions every week where I answer some of the questions that you guys leave on videos just like this or some of the other videos. So we always have a lot of fun. And we're backlogged, man. I can never finish them all. So it's all just going to the next week. And the shows are going to get bigger and bigger because I give myself a 30-minute time limit. And that's never enough. But... uh it basically starts at 5.30 p.m. and it ends when I have to eat dinner. So the time limit stays, <laughs> just to be honest with you. Let's see. Joe, thank you for coming by. Joe Shearer. t Leck, which I think is Thomas, actually, now that I've got your email. Eric Kaiser, Tech5, Timothy Salomon, Will Justice, Mitch, everybody that came and watched the show tonight, thank you so much. Please put a like on the video if you enjoyed it. We'll be back next Friday with Andy Holt from Outdoor University. I want to thank you guys one last time. Don't forget to check out those links and sign up for text notifications. I'll see you on the next one.